The last panel will be moderated by Serdar Kuzloğlu. I'm sure it's going to be a very exciting and fun one, an interesting one. So my microphone is not on. I'd like to invite Serhat Özeren. By the way, I'm going to be the moderator of the panel. I'd like to invite Timur Sırt, Faruk Eczacbaşı, Mr. Eczacbaşı. And of course, we have Ismail Akupolat. Excuse me, I forgot you. I'm very sorry. A big hand for Ismail Akupolat, please. Well, Faruk Bey is here with his briefcase. I'm very sorry. Welcome. He's here with documents, with digital documents. I know it's a bit late to say welcome, but welcome. Well, I condemn you because there's no microphone on Ismail Hakkapolat, so it's not only me. Well, thank you very much again. For those of who are still with us, there is a bit delay, a slight delay. It's five, half past five now. And according to the agenda I have, we were supposed to start at quarter past four. We look like a choir, a men's choir. One day we were at a university in another panel. We were waiting for some people to come. And I asked the dean, why don't we start? Everyone is here. And he said, well, we always have a 15-minute academic delay. And I think this is a digital delay. Up to now, I was listening to all the panels, and I said, well, I wish it's the end of internet so that we save ourselves from the trouble. Because our internet experiences are very much different than one another. The reason why we ex uh, accepted to sit in this panel was because Google promised to make a doodle out of us. So tomorrow, when you type in Google, on the home page, you will see our heads. So I will represent the two O's of Google. I'm going to moderate this panel just for watching the time, because you cannot moderate these people. They are very prominent people. We will try to be very brief. I'll try to be very brief. It's my destiny, actually. And it's a Google event, but we are still doing the Alta Vista structure. We have a panel. Panels follow one another, and people sit next to each other. It's very traditional, but things will change. But we will still be the ones that will talk. We will try to be as intra interactive as possible. I have my mobile phone with me, so I will also follow the tweets. But if you have questions, a question, not comment, I will give you the floor. So, quite briefly, I have a small question to you. Is it true to bring internet as an excuse to all the problems? Are we in a transition process? What do you say, Timur? There are a few questions that the journalists are afraid to receive. The first one is, is journalism dying, is internet dying, etc. Nothing is a matter of life and death. Or we always try to define things or as black or white, uh, or we are 
a part of something or we are against something, instead of pointing at things and instead of focus, focusing on the things that we point, we uh, look at the index finger and we try to deal with the index finger. Not everyone tries to understand each other. And you can also observe this when people are asking questions. They do not ask questions. They try to express their own opinions and they want to they want other people to accept their opinions without questioning. But there are different people as well. John was an example. He inspired me in my own story as well. In fact, when you look at all the individual stories, you see many good examples of success. And seeing those examples is an indication that this country is doing something differently. I hope that examples like John, examples like the successful people we have today will become normal one day in Turkey. And of course, this will be thanks to internet. Everyone talks about ethics, but of course you cannot fix everything with law. When you try to fix everything with law, and when you start to bring some precautions and measures, uh, things might get out of control. First of all, people should learn how to live together and people should learn how to use internet collectively. But I miss talking to Timur. I remember the old days. We were also having similar panels in techno chat days. OK. Having non-regulated environments is a utopia. And of course, we cannot think of an environment like internet, which is not regulated because it's related to many people. I'd like to ask a question to Serhat Özeren. He is the president of the Board of Internet Development. Can you please inform us about all the regula regulations that have been passed so far? Are they appropriate? Are they working well, are they operational, and how are they used by the opinion leaders? What do you mean by internet regulations? All of them or those related to security, privacy, etc.? Well, in general terms. Or can you answer the following question? Can we really regulate internet? That's a very difficult area to regulate. That's true. Because you have to pay attention to security, privacy, and of course, Freedom should be at a very maximum level, and there's a thin line in between. On which side are we standing? Well, we have to ask it to the public at large, but what do you think? According to my understanding, we are going through a learning process. The public is learning about internet, and the individuals are also learning more about internet as as they goes by internet has a history of has a history of 22 years okay in 1960s there was alphanet but it was first used 22 years ago and turkey was one of the first countries that started using internet we're not latecomers but when you look at internet penetration Two years ago, the number of subscribers in Turkey on broadband I'm talking about was around 9 million, just two years ago. Now it's around 20 million. And there's a fast development in Turkey. Of course, fiber optical infrastructure has become widespread in Turkey. GSM connectivity has increased. We all know that. But these are physical transformations, and things will get better. Yes. Is everything comfortable now? Is everything OK now? Or are you OK with the developments? I am. Do you find it comfortable, or are you really OK with the situation? I'm not, actually. 
Who's buzzing, by the way? Was it you, Timur? No. Someone is blowing through the microphone. I was just trying to find it. Well, I don't believe that the definitions are made based on recent regulations. Yes, we can talk about it. Let's make the definitions. We have uh, 20 years of history, but I think we're still using the definitions of the old world. And we are taking the measures in accordance with the structures of the old, old world. I think this is a big shortcoming. Yes, we have internet. Internet is developing at an incredible speed, but the authorities or institutions have not been established or there are no efforts to establish such authorities to provide self-control in Internet. So do you have any recommendation to Sarhat Bey? Yes, of course. Um, self-control mechanisms should be developed. Civil society organizations or civil organizations should establish internal mechanisms how to put it? The institutions or organizations who haven't been authorized by the state or who haven't been certified by the state should have self-control mechanisms, I think. In the previous panel, an example was given related to pictures used by the online websites of the newspapers. Of course, everything will change in time, and being open to change is needed, but I think we cannot be open to changes as much as we want. We all have kids, don't we? But Timur doesn't, because Timur uh, is very young. By the way, Timur is a very nice man. We inform all the single girls about Timur. That's why we are working on internet to make this information widespread. I have two kids. I'm a father of twins. And my children are growing up. And of course, naturally, they use technological instruments. Internet can become a big source of concern for parents because the ocean of Internet in which I find any information can be a nightmare for other parents because they may not be aware of certain mechanisms or certain measures that can be taken against children. So, in general terms, in your academic position, can you draw a picture of the existing situation? How will I do that? Okay, now let's take questions. It's like a mosaic. It's really complicated to make such a definition. I'm a father of a, an 11-year-old girl, and we are among the power users of Internet. But of course, you learn new things from your kids, and I learn new things from my daughter every day. We are a bunch of people here, but we're not that many, and we try to understand the things here. My daughter, for instance, she is always online from evening to morning, and I'm always worried about her. But. Newspapers, for instance, they try to compete online, and that was a good example of competition. Just before we came to the panel, I was checking internet to find a subject to talk about here. And I was tweeting all day long, and I heard myself, I saw myself in one of the news reports of Hurriyet Online. 
So even before I came to this panel, I came to this floor, Hurriyet Online wrote a news report about me. And they talked about things I said in this panel before I did that, because they looked at my tweets. Osman Bey can tell us how he can benefit from the newspaper. We talk about new media ethics. What do the newspapers do? The internet users over Google or over websites, they, I mean, the newspapers do not want the internet users to receive information from other sources. They want the internet users only come to their websites and they try to compete. So in ethical terms, in social terms, or in terms of teaching the job of journalism, traditional newspapers do not help the other types of websites. Censorship or filtering, this should not be the focal points, actually. We should be doing right education, right training. So training is important, you said, but I want you to open a parenthesis here. What do you mean by education? There are two types of education. The first one is the education of users for children at a school age. And uh, for those who are out of school, should be trained as well. In 2004, I started teaching new media. For 10 years, I've been telling the same thing. And you do not address many people. We don't have that many people in this room because it's a very late hour. The audience can be very crowded as well, but uh, compared to the population of the country, we're not much, we're not many. Well, what I'm trying to say here is the state, the government, non-governmental organizations, and every other actor related to internet. If we delay things, if we only focus on our business, then we won't have time for regulating this area or filling the gap, the cultural gap. In the US elections, National newspaper made a very good news a, mi a month ago. The digital natives will be electing their first president in 40 years' time. It will take 40 years in the United States to for the digital natives to elect their president. But uh, it means that in other countries, it will take many more years for digital natives to be doing similar things. So in order to cover this gap, there should be training programs. And I'm not talking about 20, 30 people. I'm talking about raising awareness among 35, 40 million people. And we need a lot of trainers to do that. So if you're talking about a training or education mobility, I agree with you, it's necessary, necessary, but it's a different utopia, don't you agree? Well, we have to start from somewhere, but we cannot, we do not. There are many training programs delivered by the non-governmental organizations to families. Isn't that so? Yes, there are many efforts exerted. How about the interest? There's a lot of interest among the society as well. How many people did you reach, by the way? Well, there are many different organizations organizing such training programs. Is there a survey about the target group or the number of target group? Ministry of National Education has programs. There's the FATI program as well, which is going to support that. I think, microphone, please. We signed a protocol with the Ministry of National Education from February to May for four months. In every school, teachers that have been trained will deliver training to students about how to use internet. The Ministry of 
Family Affairs is conducting a similar program as well. I didn't have the opportunity to talk about this when I was on the floor, but our institution has accepted to become a member to Safer Internet program of the European Union. There is a membership fee of 600,000 euros. Our institution will pay that, and the Turkish non governmental organizations will be able to propose projects to this fund, and they can be financed. So the non governmental organizations can be financed in their projects related to creating a safer internet environment thanks to this fund. We have heard many observations related to present day, but what do you think about the future? What kind of dreams do you have? What can be done by us? So let's share our views. But for such training, we first have to train the trainers. Who's going to train the students? That's the question who, uh, which is being asked. Uh, many people answer this question as computer engineers or computer technicians. I think new media literacy or internet literacy should be the key word. We have to separate the word security or safety uh, from this issue, and we have to focus on literacy. I think if we can build the concept and perception correctly, uh, it will be the basis for training. But I think we lack trainers. So is there a group of trainers already? I don't know. There are 40 million people, let's say, to, uh, as a target group in Turkey to be trained. But also, under the age of 18, there are millions of students and kids who are going to train them. I think this is the first question we should answer to start such training mobility. This is quite important. And we have to define the concept correctly at the beginning. We're talking about new media and internet literacy. The content of the training should be in line with those concepts. Otherwise, children will not be able to use internet. We were in, an, in another panel in a high school, and the school principal asked about future jobs. And Serdar said, porn. No, that's not what I meant. I said, well, you think of internet as a money generating device. Well, if you want to earn a lot of money on internet, I said, you can create a porn website. That was a joke, of course. Well, I will give you an example. My nephew uses lots of abbreviations when he's talking or when he's texting. The abbreviation can later become a name for a newspaper because it's so famous and it's used by everyone. So, our children, for instance, spend all their time in front of their computers, and you can only see the face of your child uh, when he uploads a picture on Facebook, and if you're friends with him on Facebook. You should not blame internet or you should not blame your child here. You should look at yourself and the way you raise your child. So the family is very important. If the child keeps on lying, that it's the fault of the parent. For instance, if in the United States you ban children under the age of 13 to, from using internet, of course children will continue connecting to internet and they will lie to their parents. And the children will lie in Turkey as well if they're banned from using the internet and of course they will continue to do so. 
bilgisayar ve internette de böyle öğretiyor. Sonuçta karşılaştığınız da öcü değil, aynadaki yansımanız belki de sadece. The education system, the traditional education system will continue in internet teaching as well. But I think uh, we should uh, change certain things here. I think the state or the government uh, when reacting to uh, the developments on internet can be really an amateur, but it's normal because internet is quite new. As a journalist, I give examples from the world of media. That was a question related to the use of pictures online. In fact, the newspapers use internet as a money-generating instrument. They receive all the news from news agencies. And they publish uh, all kinds of news, regardless of whether they're right or wrong or correct or incorrect, on their websites. And if the news agency publishes a wrongful information, then that wrongful information becomes widespread. Here, one day, I think newspapers will understand that they are killing their own reputation. Well, a small anecdote from my life as a journalist. I started to work in 1994, and I worked in every field of media. I'm trying to explain the perception of the newspapers towards the use of internet. I was the one who started user comments on the news of Radical online, but we were the first ones to remove that application. We were the first newspaper to start personalized use of uh, newspapers, but we were the first one to remove that. So. All the initiatives that I triggered were removed, then I said goodbye to the newspaper. Of course, it's hard to change your habits. I have a question to Faruk Eczacibaşı. We talk about freedom of speech, freedom to be informed, freedom to have access, freedom to make a choice. In fact, many problems dwell on those, the limitation of those problems. And of course, Turkey is not the only country who, suffer from, who suffers from such problems. It's a global world, and every country tries to find their own solutions. What do you think of that? I want to, I have to say a few words about the previous question. You asked a question before, and you asked how many of us have children. And Timur is the only single one. I'm sure I'll find a girlfriend to Timur today. It's really interesting to observe the next generation. We're talking about teaching here, or we're talking about reflecting our opinions on students. But there is a great difference between what we present them and what we want them to learn. A very typical example to me is reading a book. We all want our children, kids, to read books. But there are thousands of video games, millions of websites, and hundreds of TV channels, which can be an alternative to reading. I remember my childhood. I'm quite senior when I compare my age to your age. When I was 15 or 16, we didn't have any television sets in Turkey, or only a few families had television sets, and we didn't have TV channels. There was only one TV channel, which broadcast after 6 p.m. That was the only visual instrument. 
And of course, we had the theaters, and we had some cartoons or comics, comic books. Apart from that, we didn't have anything else providing us visual content. So we had to read books. So you were reading books because you didn't have any option. Of course, as a country, we do not read. But at the moment, young people have a lot of different alternatives to reading books, many different alternatives to reading books. You can push your kid to read a book, and your child can be a good reader just because you want him to be. 20% of the world population uh, can be good readers, actually. But from 10 or 15 years from now on, uh, the 10-year-olds or 15-year-olds will be working it will, will be working, will be in the industry or in the business sector, and they will be the ones, 80% of them will be the ones that have been raised with visual content. Two generations before me, they used to cook chestnuts and they used to tell stories to one another. This was the evening entertainment for families. We used to read books because cooking chestnuts did not mean anything for us. Uh, and we used to play on the street, we used to play on the playground. Because the future will be governed by those children. And money comes to free speech. A couple of the US ambassador was killed in Libya because of a film, a video. The events did not get bigger. They said, what a shame for the ambassador, but fortunately, it didn't grow. But of course, uh, the assassination of that ambassador is an indication of greater problems to come. People have comfort zones. And without leaving their comfort zone, they can create disasters in another part of the world. The world is standing on very sensible, uh, sensitive uh, equilibriums. So you can manipulate that equilibrium quite easily. So what's the solution? I think we should first touch upon that. And I'd like to give Google as an example, or YouTube. Google or YouTube positioned themselves differently during those times. Google said that I'm in favor of freedom of speech and in line with my constitution and within the borders of my capacity, I can take measures for that. But who is going to undertake the responsibilities of the possible future developments? I think that's uncertain. I believe that a common agreement with the non-governmental organizations is needed. And this agreement should be, should be based on ethical pledges. They should not be only dependent on laws or regulations. Uh, 
söz konusu olabilecek temsilcilerle birlikte birbirlerini anlayabilen In Istanbul, I think with the representatives of big companies, representatives of big communities, we can have a meeting. I chose Istanbul because it's the intersection point of East and West. This meeting should be preparing an environment for West to understand East and East to understand West. And the Western countries and Eastern countries should be putting forward their opinions or their current status about freedom of speech. For instance, in some countries, freedom of speech can only be limited in the event of hate speech, for instance. So uh, countries can give their own local examples. Do you believe that a local consensus can be reached after such a debate? I think it's a very difficult path, but but Sardash, up until now, the concept of free speech or freedom of speech as we know it has been defined by a very specific group in the world. It's, it has been defined by the intellectuals of Europe and America. But the world has become more universal or global, so as to say. The world is a global world now. Therefore, we need a different consensus. At least we should start building that consensus. So prominent institutions or prominent organizations should come together and maybe should define this agreement just with a few articles or bullet points, like the Declaration of Human Rights. In fact, internet is an appropriate platform. You can establish a website, you can call for proposals for everyone, you can define some keywords. If only everyone created their own free speech cloud, and we can also take the intersection points of those free speech clouds, etc. By the way, I see the audience as well. Some of them have been waving at me. I think we're getting to the end of our time. So maybe we should ask, give the floor to the audience. Maybe they have a question. Maybe we have left out some things, and there's a question about those things. I think there is a question from the front row. We were talking about delivering training programs, and we were also trying to find out who the trainers can be. In Turkey at the moment, at the primary and secondary education, there is English teaching for 10 years. And after having studied English for 10 years, a student can not speak a word of English. And the government is trying to take measures to correct that. And maybe the regulation follows the event or the development. When people do not learn English, the worst thing that can happen is they cannot speak English. But if you do not learn how to use Internet, the worst thing uh, that can happen is much worse than not being able to speak English, actually. You will be disconnected from the rest of the world. I'm not the regulatory body, so I cannot answer the question of who can organize this training. I'm not pointing out the information and telecommunication authority as well as an organizer. We need a consensus here, as Faruk Bey said. Our society can be divided quite easily. In the afternoon, I was listening to the panel and we were to they were talking about nomads and digital natives. I think we have to find a consensus. OK. Timur is going to say a few words as well, but in order to 
come up with a concrete proposal for this consensus. Can we bring a proposal? On 8th of November 2012, in this panel, we took an initiative, or we are taking an initiative, to create an environment for opening a website, for instance, or who wants that? Creating a website. Who wants to create a website? No one. You? OK. Let's get to know you. You are assigned as the responsible director for that. I'm from Kadir House University. Well, no one will give you better marks just because you volunteered for that. OK. You are responsible to create that website. And we are responsible to promote that project and scale that project. So this is a concrete outcome or benefit that is created in this Google Big Tent Istanbul 2012. And I'm ready to support in any way, in every way. And I can also take some role to moderate this initiative. And I'm inviting you to take part as well, because you are educated people and you are very people, conscious people. This is an environment governed by freedom of speech. Anyone can raise their opinion. If you have challenges, you can bring them forward as well. And we can think of a name for this initiative as well. In the previous panel, there was another question raised. With Ismail, we set up an organization, a group called Internet Policies Group, and we prepared a proposal for an internet constitution. And when we were doing that, we wanted to define our rights, and we wanted to raise the voice of the civilians to talk about their rights. We have that background, we have that infrastructure related to having a constitution of internet. We can develop on that as well, we can take that as a basis as well. As a journalist for 20 years, I spent 15 years supported by computers, and for 15 years this country related to content could not make an agreement, and we are still buying the content from other countries. OK, you might be unable to develop the technology, but when it comes to content, come on, you can create the content. We cannot even establish consensus when it comes to developing the training curriculum. So. I'm quite concerned about reaching a consensus in such a wide area. I think we should approach one another. We should work with the government, the non government organizations, and World of Academia. OK, my proposal was to initiate such an attempt. We will see. I mean, if it's a futile attempt, we will see in the future. We're not policymakers who are destined to come up with solutions. Let's make this initiative anyway. OK, I just want to make a contribution. That will be the final one. Our board, the Internet Development Board, is composed of politics, bureaucrats, and world of academia. We organized the panel, a seminar. Uh, which was participated by 200 people. Why didn't you invite me? Well, OK. We will organize a similar seminar, and you will be the moderator. We're talking about the Turkish perspective for internet, but I think young people are the best ones to explain us the current situation. Because we have a lot of young people who are trying to establish their own companies or coming up with projects. So let's organize a seminar in a nice university and let's hear the opinions of young people. Let's hear their expectations, hear their challenges. OK, I will undertake the role of the moderation. And what will you do? 
everything apart from the moderating. Okay. And Ismail Hoja will find us the university to organize a seminar. Okay. Let's bring these issues together and let's come up with some bullet points, some main ideas. You are all invited to participate. And if you know people who can contribute to this initiative, please let them know. I. There's a poem that I like most. The famous poet says, you should speak at least three languages, and you should speak. Uh, you should be able to swear in three languages at least, because uh, you're not someone prominent. You are a child of a country who missed it, which missed the train. But I think we're catching the train now. We are on the verge of a transformation period. We have a lot of opportunities waiting for us. And we are in an environment where we can cross the borders, think out of the box. Of course, internet has its own problems, but every area has problems. So let's not be pessimistic. And let's try to overcome these challenges all together and without waiting for people to push us. Let's do it all together and let's take the step as educated people, as smart people.